We're talking a lot about income inequality in America. And so I have come here to Hollywood to give you the true Hollywood story of income inequality in America. Let's talk about it. Hey, I'm Craig and welcome to Market Power, where we look at the power of markets and economics to shape our world. Anytime we're talking about income inequality, redistribution, top marginal tax rates, these are all things that are discussing inequality in America. Anytime you hear about income inequality in the United States, you're probably hearing about the work of Thomas Piketty and some of his friends, who spent their lives measuring inequality in the United States and documenting the trends. In 2014, Thomas Piketty published Capital in the 21st Century, a big book on inequality, and I mean big in two ways. First, that beast was 700 pages, more than two and a half pounds. And second, it was big as in it was very popular. It spent three consecutive weeks at the top of the New York Times bestseller list. And that just blows my mind that a 700 page book on economic data spent three weeks at the top of the New York Times bestseller list. What I want to talk about in this video is how Hollywood can help us understand some of the trends that Thomas Piketty documented. If you look at this graph right here, you'll see the share of income that went to the top 1% of earners. And you'll see that at the beginning of the 1900s is about 20%. 20% of all income went to the earners at the top 1% of the distribution. After World War II, that share dropped almost down to 10%. After that drop, it stayed low for a while until about the 1980s where it's gone up again until we're hitting about that same high point of 20% of income going to the top 1% of earners. What can Hollywood teach us about this graph? Well, we can focus on two parts, that low flat part and then also the increase at the end. And we can try to understand why these things have occurred. Piketty and other researchers argue that the reason why this was low and flat was because of high marginal tax rates. At one point during that period, marginal tax rates were as high as 90%. That 90% tax rate essentially put a cap on how much income you could have in the United States. There are some people who argue that the share that the top 1% had was not as low as has been documented. It was much higher and they were just really good at hiding their money. That's where Hollywood comes in. This article by Joe Nocera over at Bloomberg is called The Golden Age of Hollywood Tax Avoidance. And it shows how there were some celebrities that went to great lengths to hide their income. For instance, Bing Crosby would buy oil companies or set up just basically shill corporations to take over that income that he had and make sure that he didn't have to pay the full taxes on it. The article in and of itself is interesting because of the fun stories there. But the lesson is more important and that when we try to raise tax rates, often what people will do is go to great lengths to avoid those taxes. In fact, this is what we're already seeing. There are many people who argue for higher marginal tax rates, who refuse to marry their partner even though they are living in the exact arrangement they would otherwise, because if they were to get married, they would face higher tax rates. And so they are avoiding taxes by just not getting married. So the first lesson we can get from Hollywood is that even if we set high tax rates, people can find ways to avoid them. Why has income inequality been increasing since the 1980s? Well, again, Piketty and his fellow researchers are arguing that this is a problem with American institutions. Tax rates have been cut, labor unions have been reduced. These kind of changes have put more income into the hands of the top 1%. The biggest case for the changes in taxes causing inequality comes from looking at France. France at the beginning of the 1900s looked a lot like the US, where the top 1% held a lot of the income, and then after World War II there was a drop. But in France, that drop stayed. The incomes of the top 1% never recovered to that high level it was in the early 1900s. And so this is a case that you know they didn't have those same tax reforms that we had in the United States, and therefore that kept income inequality lower. This is strong evidence, and it's hard to dispute. But I wanna bring up our second lesson from Hollywood. And that's where I wanna look at these income inequality statistics for movies. What has been happening with income inequality in box office revenues? Why do we even care about box office revenues? Well, I wanna look at the trends in inequality among movies and see how that has been changing in the past few decades. The nice thing there is that box office revenues aren't gonna be subject to marginal tax rates, so we know that inequality isn't gonna be driven by changes in taxes, and there's no reason to hide your revenue. Movies wanna make as much money as possible, and there's no way for them to hide their revenues in different corporations or buying different investments. It's just about how many people came to see your movie. I've collected data on box office revenues for all movies since 1995. I got this data from thenumbers.com. I use their data 
update on another video on the value of an Oscar nomination. So go check that video out too. Not enough movies look, come out for us to get a good consistent picture of what happens in the top 1%. So I'm gonna shift to the top 10%. Piketty has calculated these same numbers for the top 10% in the United States and the patterns look the same as the top 1%. So I think we're fine at looking at the top 10%. I took all movies released in each year and calculated the share of box office revenues going to the top 10% of these movies. And what I found, frankly, shocked me. At the beginning of my time period, in 1995, the top 10% of movies were earning 35% of all box office revenues. But that figure increased until 2014, where the top 10% were making about 50% of the revenues. There was this odd jump in 2015, and up till 2017, the top 10% of movies were making in the range of 55 to 60% of all box office revenues. So income inequality has been increasing in movies as well. In fact, if we get the same statistics that Piketty has calculated for 1995 to 2014, and we put it on the same graph as the movie statistics, we find the exact same trend. Now, of course, the income inequality is less variation than the box office. That's because my income stays the same from one year to the next, whereas new movies are coming out each year, so we're gonna see a little bit more variation. But the fact that those trend lines are exactly the same tells me that there's something a little bit more going on rather than just tax rates. Is that a pure coincidence? Or do we have a theory of income inequality that can explain both the increase in income inequality in the United States and the increase in box office inequality in Hollywood. I argue that there is, it's called the superstar effect. And we can learn more about the superstar effect by talking about movies. In fact, in my next video, I'm gonna explain more about the superstar effect using Captain Marvel, which I believe is just layers of the superstar effect and can teach us so much about inequality. Thanks for watching Market Power today. I'm Craig. Please subscribe so that way you can stay tuned for that next episode and also see more videos on economics in the world around us.